Today, a quick video to talk about something that is not often discussed, but is important to realize, and that is the difference between a copy and a reference in Blueprints. For the example, I'm just going to open up my third-person character Blueprints here, and you see a bunch of these little pins here, and these you should be familiar with. But, um, here we go, uh, if we get a function like increment or decrement integer or float, you will see that it actually has a differently shaped pin. It has this little diamond icon rather than the round ones. And that is the difference between a copy and a reference. Let's just do something as an example to show you the difference. Most importantly, the difference comes in when you're making functions. So let's make a function and let's say this is a add to numbers, something like that. And there we're going to input two float numbers to add together. So that will be uh, floats one, which of course will be a float value, and we will have a float two, which will be a float value as well. Now, if we simply want to uh, add these two together, you would think, okay, we do uh, this, and that is pretty much all there is to it, right? And then we could even uh, return, and the result of that is going to be our return value. This is just a very simple function to add two floats together. We don't need that, because that's what the addition node already does. But for an example, this is the easiest way to show this. So now let's add in a uh, F key event, just the first key that I had under my finger. And on pressed, we're going to be running the add to numbers function. And here we can, of course, add the two numbers we want, like a 5 and a 7, and that will then output uh, 12 as a value. But what if we want to change the value of one of our variables? And this is where the copy and reference thing becomes important. Because if we have a variable, let's set the variable here uh, called value, which of course will have to be a float. If we set this value to 5, and instead of just putting in 5 here, we want to add 7 to the value of our variable, this is not actually going to do that. And I can prove that to you because I can uh, print string after doing that operation. And if I print the value of, uh, well, value, you're going to see that it still will be 5, even after we've seemingly added 7 to it. As you can see, it remains 5, which is a little bit weird, right? Because we added 7 to it. And I can do you one better. Uh, the output of this node actually is 12, because it did add those numbers together. So let's also uh, print out that value uh, next, and now you will see the value of value itself is still 5, but the output of that node will be 12, and there we go. You can see that that is the case. What you could, of course, do is, let's remove these for now, you could also then set the value of value to whatever the output here is, and whatever, whatever, whatever. But that's actually not entirely needed. What is happening here? This is using copies. So whenever you see one of these round pins, it's taking the value from whatever you put into it, creating a copy, and working with that. So anything we do in here to change any value of our inputs is going to change a copy, not the original value. So we have our 5, which comes from our variable. Uh, that is copied over, and the copy of that is getting 7 added to it, and then outputted. The original is entirely left alone. But if we want something to be able to actually influence the value of a variable directly itself, what we can do is we can come up here into inputs, and instead of just uh, leaving this alone, we can change this to a pass by reference, which will change this into one of those diamond shaped uh, input pins. And now that we have this reference, what we can do is we can set the value. We can set by reference. So this will get us a set float with one of these target input pins. And that will allow us to set the value of the variable outside of this function. So with that added in now, uh, we can see I added back in the print string here. Uh, we pass in the value into a reference pin. It's getting 7 added to it and then nothing comes out of this return. It's just the value variable again, and that will be printed out. So if we go into the gameplay now, we can see that it actually does add seven to it every single time. And just to make sure that everybody properly understands this, if I go back and say uh, pass by reference is actually uh, false again, this will no longer work. 
because the moment we go into this function, we're now working with a copy. So once again, uh, we can try, but that's not actually going to work. It will still just print out five because it's trying to set the value of a copy, not of the original. Now, a couple more things, and then we'll end up the video. Let's add a new parameter and uh, call this something like character, which will be of type uh, character. It's going to be a object reference. You can make an object reference, uh, a pass by reference, if you wanted to. Uh, it does not matter though, because a object reference in and of itself already is just pointing at a different object. So if I try to sketch this out, we have our uh, value variable, and that itself has some information in it. In this case, that was our uh, float with a value of five. If we pass that into our uh, function that we have here, we had two ways to do that. We could make a copy of it. So we take this and we make a copy, which just makes a new float with the value five. But we could also directly put this into our function without making a copy. That's what we just did. A object reference, on the other hand, uh, which is anything with a blue pin in Blueprints, doesn't have a real value in and of itself. What an object reference already does is it just points to a thing that exists in our world. So another actor, another character, another whatever, right? So if this already is just something that points at another object, if we copy that over instead of referencing it, it's going to copy pointing at that other object. So that doesn't actually make a difference. So for object references, you don't need to do this. For actual values, you need to do this. So if you have like a float, an integer, a string, whatever, there it does matter. Object references, you don't need to pass by reference because object references in and of themselves already are references. If you're interested in learning more about how this works and why this works, uh, it's a good idea to look into my C++ course, even if you're not too interested into using C++, because that goes into uh, how pointers work and why this functions the way it does. So that's a short little video on the usage of both copy and reference parameters for your functions. Quite important to realize if you want to actually edit information on existing variables, you're going to need to use references. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,